Hello everyone, this is our review of chapter 16, which is all about access and R. In the first edition, access took up an entire chapter. Now it's been demoted to half a chapter. R wasn't there. R now gets a half a chapter. So, I like these programs. Let's get busy. Access first. Access is a database program used for collecting, storing, and analyzing data. It has objects, things that are there to do mm, everything we pretty much can dream about. Access forces the users to have some discipline. An Excel worksheet is a large rectangle. You can't fill them all. Divide it into cells. In those cells, you can put almost anything. The structure and the integrity are left up to the user. Let's go here. Let's have a look. This again is also from the first edition. This is where I did time series analysis in Excel. Here we go. We have a table over here. Uh, I know that this is a calculated field, but you don't. Uh, we have something here that is uh, not exactly a rectangle. We have sub-calculations over here. We have other messes over there. And again, calculations here. We can go over here. We have more calculations. I know they calculations. One row calculations. And this, these calculations come about every... Um, it looks like every 45 or so rows, 48. Now we have more up here. We have that. That's the mean absolute percentage error. We have another small table here that's not the same size as this. This is the forecast. And in fact, these are the actual. This is the forecast for that station. Here's the forecast again. I know what's going on because I did it. I have an idea what's happening here. I have an idea what's happening here, but you know, it is, in all honesty, a bit of a mess and a bit of a hodgepodge. Access will never allow uh, us to do that. It forces some discipline. Now, the architecture of access, four things we care about. Tables. Our data is stored in tables. We have to work off of a table. Queries, the cornerstone. Every time we ask a question or when we want to do something with the data, it's a query. Reports, used to neatly present our results. And we'll see later, it's really neat. Forms, used to enter data. We don't do that that much in forensic analytics, but we did see the switchboard in one of the earlier chapters. Access tables. We have some rules and we need to follow them. Otherwise, it's not going to go so well with us. Try to avoid storing duplicate information in the same database. Database is divided into tables that each store a little part of the picture. The table should be able to be linked in some meaningful manner. A record is basically a row. So in the purchasing car data, each row would be the date, the amount, the agency, and so forth. In the summer Ford um, check data, we had check number, amount, vendor, date, ledger accounts, and the like. A field is a column, and it contains all the data about one aspect, so it contains only the date. Don't mix them up. Have a distinct name. In, in Excel, I could have called all those previous headings the same thing. Apples. It doesn't mind. The order of the record should have no effect on the results. This is a bit of a problem later because sometimes I want it to have an effect on the results if I may be calculating something like a cumulative sum. Each record should be unique. 
We should not uh, should be able to change the data in one field in one column without it affecting any other fields. Importing data in Access easy as pie. External data, new data source, Excel, text from a database. That means another Access database would work fine. Just point and it's all done using the graphical unit user in interface. Eight types of queries. The top two are our main ones. Creating a calculated field. So in the census table, we could have number of people and square miles. If we want to calculate people per square mile, we have to divide one by the other. It would be a calculated field. Grouping records. We need that to uh, calculate, uh, remember the largest subset? We need to calculate the total or the count per subset. It'll be group by subset and then count or sum and the like. Identifying duplicates. I prefer to use grouping records for duplicates, but the Access has got a built-in wizard for duplicates. Filtering data. One of the conditions that we do use for our Benford's Law Analysis we might say calculate the first digit where the amount is greater than or equal to one penny or greater than or equal to 10. A join is when we have data in two different tables and we need both of those tables to answer the question. And we did that in our network access chapter example. Appending data, it's June. If I want to add my June data to the January to May to, uh, data, I will append the June, st stick it at the bottom. Cross tab, second level of grouping. I might want to do a query where I get my total per merchant per year. Cross tab will allow me to do total per merchant per year and total per month. Parameter query. This is where I put in the name. I would like all the checks for vendor, Acme Incorporated. I type in Acme Incorporated and it'll pop out with all the records for that vendor. Now, I see this many times in Excel. Access can't work with this. I need a field called year, a field called month, not that as headings there. I need gallons per day. And indeed, this is gallons per month. This is a cal calculated field as well. Um, in the first edition, I have quite a long series of pages on how to get from here to there. If you need to do that, you need to go back to that first edition and have a look. Access has got a database lim a limit of two gigabytes. Here's the problem. The size exceeded error message is not that clear. You sort of have to realize this thing isn't running properly because I'm over two gigabytes. I have some solutions. One is by linking to tables. Another one is to delete unnecessary fields. Or I can move over to some other uh, set of software. For all the access limits, there it is. And by the way, the way these things are numbered is Forensic Analytics 2, and then this is number 11, the um, shortened version. I didn't write the chapters in order, which is why these numbers don't sort of follow consecutively from chapter to chapter. What I didn't talk about is the Access Documenter. And what that does is it documents, it documents my tables. It makes a record of my queries, my record of my reports, a record of my forms. It is actually quite comprehensive even for a small, uncomplicated database. And this would be an indispensable part of any type of working papers for a forensic project. So have a look at the chapter. I talk about the access documenter. I also talk about other access issues, miscellaneous issues that happen. What happens if your query hangs and the, the whole computer doesn't sort of want to respond to anything? How do we get out of that? And the like. Almost done. Reports. This is an example of our reports. It is really, really neat. Uh, 
My query is the largest merchants. I bring this into the report version, take this query, and now I formulate this nice table over here, and you can make that table neat enough to add into any management report. Let's look at the help. Help. That's the site I go to. Lots of help, lots of training, almost anything you want to know, but we're afraid to ask. It's there and it's available. This came yesterday from David Sawyer, Dr. Negrini. So great to reconnect with you. Please see the attached images, some of my work from 2003. This was my second book, Digital Analysis, Tests and Statistics Using Microsoft Access. This was supposed to sort of look like a Benford graph going down. And here it is, December 2003 to David Sawyer. Wish you every success. Access the only database interrogation tool that I use. And at that stage, I lived in Dallas. So <clears throat> I enjoyed reading the note and I enjoyed reconnecting with David Sawyer. R. Rather short name. R. Open source. Free. Very popular. Users would be measured in the millions. When you load it, it comes with just the bare necessities. When you want to do something complex, you have to add what is called packages. These packages can do almost anything. In fact, it'll be hard for you to think up a package that hasn't been created yet. Installing them is easy. 15,800 packages. Ease of use has been much improved by the graphical user interface RStudio. So let's have a look at RStudio. If you just did R, you would just see this. But RStudio makes it all spiffy and gives it this whole graphical user interface and the various panes. This looks and feels like Windows, does a lot of the things in exactly the same uh, manner. In essence, this is my text editor. And I put my code here. This is called a console and my results would be shown over here. Um, I have all this upfront blurb, it would be shown below this. What you don't want is red text. Red means errors. Not that much fun. Environment and history is top right. And what I would have here are my tables and my objects that I have defined. This says what's going on in your project. And at the bottom, I could call this admin central. Help. All my files, all my plots, all my packages, whether I'm using my packages in the current project and the not and and uh, or not so R studio it too is free and it takes R and makes it so nice and familiar and user friendly this is where we get all the packages tables of available packages tables of available packages sorted by name uh, it's all there it's like going shopping and everything is free. The advantages of R runs on all the major platforms, has many users. This is good because they create packages and they help people online. They create videos. The ggplot2 package has impressive graphics. Many R related training options available, videos, books, live workshops, everything you wanted to learn about R, but we're afraid to ask, it's there. R is now integrated with a number of applications, including Oracle, SAP, Microsoft, Tableau. And what this, these two sentences mean is that you can be in those applications 
You can seamlessly exit to do some work in R. You can pull your results from R back into those applications, and it would be almost as if you never left. You'd, <coughs> you'd still be there. You would just sort of leave like when you go to work um, and you walk down the passage to the um, soda machine. It's as if you just walked down to the soda machine and came back with a soda. You would not even have to take a walk. You'd leave and you'd come back into these packages with soda, which was your objective. Take some effort initially. You can create impressive looking dashboards, much better than the ones I showed you even in chapter one. Have a peek. R Markdown. The way I wrote this book, I had a word file blank. I would write some blurb. Then I would go and usually I would be using the um, purchasing card data. So I would go into Access and Excel do some type of analysis, take a screenshot, come back into Word, paste the screenshot, carry on writing, and go again, do that repetitively. Screenshots from where I was, bringing the results back into Word. What R Markdown does, it combines everything. We'll start with headings, we'll start with a descriptive text, We'll have the code, but you can use, you can hide the code. We'll have a link to the data sources. We'll have the results of the test. So it will have text. It will have the code. It will then, you can hide the code though. It will have a link to the data sources, which could simply be right on your own computer. It will bring in the results of the tests and you would type the conclusions reached. It would, in the end, you'd have to use a, um, a command called knit. K-N-I-T, knit. Knit, and what it would do, it would go and fetch and do the results and bring you this far, and then you have to go, go do in the conclusions. In summary, though, an R Markdown document has everything in one nice, convenient document. You can change one thing, you can change another thing, and everything is all housed at one central source. Trust me, I have my screenshots in one folder, I have my access data sets in one folder, I have my Excel, I have my Word documents, everything is all over the place. Our markdown, one document with everything. Now, this example is in the chapter, and the nice thing is you would go right there. You would go there, you would enter these commands one by one, and you would see your results over there. And I have a pur purposeful error over here. Um, and what do I'm doing? I'm doing various things that get slightly more complicated as we go is numeric y, true times y, c bind is binded these two columns together, head means give me the first, in this case n equal to the top three results. Um, this is just to get you started. I've used this in accounting classes and the students were quite okay. Maybe we took 45 minutes to walk through this slowly. Uh, there were no painful expressions. People enjoyed it in fact. This is indeed the code that can be used to do the vector variation score going back to chapter 9 or 10, I can't remember. So, here we go. Library, read, read the Excel file and bring in the tax data, which is Joe Biden's um, tax numbers. I could go here, and I needn't, in fact, have done that. This is something else that I was busy working with. Um, here we go. I could actually go File, Import Dataset. Here we go. From text, from Excel, from any other source. I could have used that instead. You can talk about install packages. So one note here is that in order to run RStudio, you do in fact need to be connected to the internet. 
to that if you if you instruct it to install a package um, it can go and fetch it library means put this package in the current um, project as such so the the console is clear so there's going to be nothing there I could have if I had tables over there let's look at one table there we go and this is Summerford School and this is uh, one of the cases that uh, was assigned to you okay where were we we were here this is all I need to do the whole vector variation I square the numbers I create a nice table over here column C bind the second series of calculations is where I ca calculate the uh, lengths of A and B but I need to go it's two sort of a two stager here we get to the length over here over here I'm writing these preliminary results out to a CSV file here I calculate the very uh, VVS here I calculate the angle in degrees but I need a few steps over here but this shouldn't look too complicated of course if you make an error somewhere along the line here you're going to get red and it'll stop executing um, write the results to a CSV file write it out and uh, all these results are going out this shouldn't look that daunting I hope it doesn't and so in the environment which would be the top right pane I would have all these things these are my um, along the way calculations and I put the arrows here because this is theta in degrees and the VVS this is alphabetical because you might remember that I did this way before I did that so and these are the correct numbers for Joe Biden's tax returns and just as a reminder a vector variation score of that is close to one and it's close to the maximum possible so access keeps things neat data is housed in tables calculations are run as queries results are shown in reports the database documenter a complete record of everything that's there and of everything that what I did R&R studio free statistical software programs R is flexible enough to do simple tasks and it can do complex tasks like recommending songs on Pandora will only do what you tell it to do if you don't let R know what what to do then it can't do it I like both of these programs I've hoped you've enjoyed the review and so from me to you it is bye bye